<laughs> Some people say I am Eddie Linehan from Brosna. Other people say I am Eddie Linehan from Clare. I'm a storyteller. Lots of people say it would be Shanachie, and I suppose in strict terms that's true, since I have been collecting stories and the backgrounds of stories for the last 42 years. And what is Shanachus, after all, except the knowledge of old things? The fairies, the Irish, the she, Nadine Ushle, Nadine Ele, there's many names for the fairies. Um, Irish people tended to keep their distance when it came to the fairies. There's many, many names for them. And the reason for that was respect. The shapeshifters, that could be in the shape of an animal. For example, the black dog is a favourite one. Uh, something dark, usually. Black beetles. Uh, or the shape of a person. But I, I, I asked what kind of a person. It doesn't have to be a little, one of the little people so-called. Not at all. Not at all. Could be just like us, except a little bit paler than us. And the reason being, of course, they have no red blood in them. Their blood is pale. If they meet you and you don't give them the, the right reply, if you don't give them a sort of temporising reply, uh, if you can, you, you, you can be found torn to pieces. They can be vicious. They can be utterly vicious. The first story in that book is a story from a man who told me about what could happen to you unless, unless you keep them thinking, keep them guessing, but don't answer them yes or no. If you do, it could cost you your life. You could be found with your throat ripped out. That's a long way from the fairies in Walt Disney. I tell you, you meet those boys and you're not prepared. The Mollerthorn, I'll tell you a story about that. Garrett Barry, the famous piper, you know, the, the Elam Pipes. He was one of the famous pipers. He, he was born in Ina. And he was credited with saving uh, Elam piping. He was blind and uh, it was summertime. And he came to a farmhouse and they were all out saving the hay. Garrett, they were delighted to see him because they had a little child of about 18 months old and the child was in the cradle asleep. And the woman of the house delighted to see Garrett and she said, look, Garrett, would there be any chance at all? The child is there. You might listen out for the child. And if there's any little bit of bother, call me. And they're in the field next door and there's something there on the table for you. And of course, Garrett was delighted to get something to eat. No problem at all, ma'am, he said. And to pass the time, he took out his pipes and started playing them away softly by the, uh, by the fire. And he was playing there and eating a bite and drinking soup. And maybe he had been playing about 10 minutes when, all of a sudden, the little child, 18 months old in the cradle, sat up. And he says, Garrett, he says, that's lovely music, but I had better. Lived back in the cradle, smiled up to his ears and went to sleep. Garrett was listening away to this, of course, but kept playing and playing and playing. But uh, finally, anyway, the people out in the meadow that came in for their midday meal got a bit of quietness. Garrett whispered to the man of the house what had happened, what he had heard. And the man mm -mm -mm, nodded, got the poker and stuck the poker into the embers. And when the poker was red hot, now he uh, took out the poker out of the fire. And remember now his wife and the children knew nothing about any of this. He took the poker out of the fire and <coughs> jabbed it into the cradle. Immediately, oh, the child in the cradle, so-called child, <laughs> up out of the cradle and out the door in a run. And of course, the woman of the house, holy Christ, she thought her husband had gone out of his wits entirely. But, but, looking at this, my God, the child did. <laughs> and then they had the scraping at the back door. Over she went to open the door, and there was her own child at the back door. Back. It had been a changeling. 
The Banshee is a, a harbinger, it's a fancy word, but she's the one who warns certain Irish families of death, of a coming death in the family. And Irish people, they weren't afraid of the Banshee. Most people heard the Banshee rather than saw the Banshee. But I've heard people, I've recorded people who actually saw the Banshee. Most heard, few saw. I've recorded a people, a few people who did actually see her. And the description they gave me of her was tall, thin woman with long grey hair. Now, I... I've, I've recorded a couple of long stories about her, too long to go into here, but one of them, frightening story, it was on the way home from the fair of Gott, a young man uh, at the time. Here they were now after a miserable day at the fair, <laughs> and they were coming back nearly dawn. And the son, he saw the light in the window, the mother obviously making the breakfast. And just as I was coming in the Boreen, there, sitting above on the wall on the left-hand side, he told me, was this woman combing her hair, long grey hair. <coughs> and then, no, she was. She wasn't anybody local. So anyway, the father and the son, they were together. And as they passed her, the father saluted her. No reply, she just kept combing and combing. And... They passed on. Now, the gate, the gate, they just ahead of him. And the uncle was a couple of steps behind, and he saluted. No reply. But the boy told me, and the old man, as he was then, he said the uncle was a different kind of a fellow entirely. When he got no reply, he crept over, and he snapped the comb out of her hand, not meaning no harm, but just to see what he gets a response. And immediately there was this wail. He said, <laughs> well, he said, it froze their blood, or mine anyway, he says. Well, they made for the gate and made, burst in the gate and made for the door. We burst in the door and he said, what I noticed was my mother there at the fire, open fireplace at the time, and she's stirring a pot of whatever she was making for the breakfast, probably porridge or something. And she looked at us and she saw the comb, obviously, in my uncle's hand. And she said, close the door, close the door. And my father around, slammed out the door and this crying surrounded the house. And my mother said, what, what in the Christ did you do? And when she saw the comb, of course, she said, oh, Lord Christ, she said, what, what, what are you after doing? And my uncle said, all oh, right, she says, I, I'll give it back. And my mother said, no, 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 she said. And she made for the fire where the tongs was. And she said, give me that. And she took the comb in the tongs, no big old-fashioned tongs, you know, like the, the ones a blacksmith would make, and took the comb in the tongs, and she said, open it, small bit. And my father opened the door a couple of inches, and she poked out the tongs and the comb on it, and immediately it was snapped out of her hand, and she slammed out the door. And the thing stopped, the crying stopped. Now, the one thing he remembered, he said, was the silence. And the four of them there in the kitchen and the silence, he said, it, it seemed like 10 minutes, but he said it was probably only 10 seconds. But that silence. And then he said, my mother, luckily somebody kept there since. My mother went over to the window. And of course, you know, in a cottage, small windows and the shutters, you know, timber shutters that if you open them, and it was dawn by now, and she looked out. And there, down on the footpath, before, the, under the window, was the tongues, heavy tongues now, and it twisted into an S-hook. And she said to my uncle, come here, she said, look at this, look out there. And he did. And she says, if you had put out your hand with that comb, that'd be your hand now, that'd be your arm now. A dirty looking idiot, she says. That for the banshee. And she says, Why didn't you leave me alone? Or le leave her alone about her business and go about your business? And he said, That happened. That happened, he said. That man is still alive.